What's up? It's Big Jack Films here, and welcome back to an opening night. Um, again, I'm not in my usual location. I'm on vacation. In fact, uh, tomorrow I'm heading to Orlando to shoot some stuff for Season 8. But uh, regardless, uh, I just finished up uh, this morning. It's Wednesday morning. Um, woke up, had a shower, ate a bowl of cereal, and I kind of had a bit of a vibe here. I watched the Power Rangers 30th anniversary special called Mighty Morphin Power Rangers once and, all, all, once and always. I'm kind of stuttering here. Now, full disclosure for those who don't know, I'm a bit of a Power Rangers fan. I grew up with the tail end of the Mighty Morphin era. I did watch uh, I did watch Zeo. I did watch Turbo. I did watch In Space. I watched a fair share of Power Rangers. I liked the first movie. I liked Turbo, the Power Rangers movie. I did not really care for the new movie that came out a couple of years ago. If you want to know my thoughts about it, I'll put a link down below to my review of that. Really good video, by the way. I did a lot with a lot of Power Ranger actors and Arita cosplayer and stop motion. It's really cool. Uh, check it out. But, um... I decided to sit down and watch the 30th anniversary special. It just came out on Netflix, and I'm here to talk about it. So, what's it about, basically? Well, it's about the Mighty Morphin team. It's essentially the equivalent of... Uh, a band reunion, and that's one thing I can say about it uh, very quickly, is that it's something I was kind of thinking about as I was hearing about this production, about what they were doing with the special, is that um, I was talking to my buddy Sean, JT is reborn about it, in fact, we were going to do a, um, or a live stream talking about this, but we just didn't have time, but early on I was telling him, you know, if you really think about it, this is the equivalent of our parents who grew up with, like, the Beatles, and you know, like uh, Rolling Stones and all those big bands of the 60s and 70s, and obviously when those bands broke up, uh, people kind of just felt sad about it, and there was like no way we were going to get rid of You know, eventually the band did get back together for a couple reunion shows. And that's how I could describe a lot of stuff that we grew up with in the 90s, 80s and 90s. So the Ninja Turtles, the Power Rangers, the Sailor Scouts, all those kind of tokusatsu five-colored teams. Um, for us 90s kids... That was our, those were our bands. Those were our bands. And when the band breaks up, um, we kind of lose interest and it's sad. But, you know, for us, 30 years later, this is like seeing the big band get back together. Um, or what's left of it, unfortunately. And which brings us into the plot of this episode, which is an hour long special. Get started right the fuck away where, uh, Billy, uh, David Yost, returning after like 30 years since he left, uh, Power Ranger Zeo, I believe. Um, has apparently gotten to a bit of a hustle in trying to revive Zordon, uh, but ends up bringing back Rita Repulsa because, hey, I heard in Cosmic Fury, or I don't know what the new Power Rangers special, uh, the new Power Rangers show is, um, according to that, Lord Zed's back, so obviously Rita's back, so the villains are coming back, and, and by the way, um, with the, the whole premise, I'll say this about the special, what they do in the plot is that, they kind of... Well, I'll tell about spoilers later. Anyway, uh, so Rita's back, and she basically uh, wipes the floor with the Rangers. In fact, um, ends up killing one of them. Uh, shocking enough. Yes, there is death, there is threats, there is so much... It's much more darker. While still staying true to the original series, it did grow up with the fans. Um, so one of the Rangers does die, and we have to also deal with that Ranger's daughter who, um, basically, essentially, is gonna take up the mantle of her, of her, um, parents, uh, thing. So, basically, that's the premise. Rita wants to create a time machine to go back in time and give information to herself, which makes no sense. Why don't you just go back and just do other things if you're dealing with time travel? It's sort of the Back to the Future 2 thing with Biff going back and giving him, uh, information to better the future. And so the Power Rangers have to stop them, uh, but also a lot of the Rangers from previous teams are captured to fuel the time machine. So that's pretty much the premise. Um, and what are my first thoughts on it? Um, well, I will say, you know what? I know what I was gonna go into going in, because half the time, their anniversary specials aren't really that good. Um, the only good one that I remember was the 10th anniversary special, which was Forever Red, um, where they had the 10 Red Rangers all team up, which was awesome. But then you had Once a Ranger, Always a Ranger, had its moments, but 
It was part of Operation Overdrive, which is one of the worst seasons of the show. Um, only saved by that special, but even then it wasn't that good. And then you had the Legendary War, which was fucking awful. <laughs> awful waste of potential using the Go Kiger uh, uh, Sentai footage. Um, absolute garbage. Uh, and then you had the other special, I think from Ninja Steel, which was like... They had, like, all these other rangers. They gave uh, Tommy much more, I guess, a final send-off because, unfortunately, uh, Jason David Frank did pass away last year. Um, and unfortunately, I never got to meet him, but I wish I did. Uh, but to the point, uh, basically, yeah, this special is one of the good ones. I can safely say it is one of the good anniversary specials. It is up there with the Ninja Steel special and Forever Red. Now, I do like Forever Red a little bit more than this, but... This was a nice reunion of the original Mighty Morphin team. Um, getting them back together, seeing them still kick ass 30 years later, um, and just having a good time in Angel Grove battling Rita. And yes, Rita is once again voiced by Barbara Goodson. Uh, Alpha 5 or Alpha, I think, 9 we're at, I don't know. Uh, also voiced by the same actor from the show. Um, but there's a lot of standouts. Like, I will say this. The two best actors in this, in this special are definitely... Um, Walter Jones and uh, David Yost, uh, the original Black and Blue Ranger. And I will say, honestly, it feels like this was something they were definitely a part of. I know the show definitely had a few writers who definitely did their homework. Like, they even make a nod to the whole Zordon saying, too much pink energy is dangerous. So it's like, you guys were watching Link Kara's History of Power Rangers, weren't you? You knew about that. But um, there's a lot of nods to, like, previous stuff in the, in the show's history. Um, I thought the fight scenes were really good. The special effects at times are a huge upgrade. It's really cool to see Mighty Morphin Power Rangers in 4K, uh, the original team in 4K. It's kind of surreal, actually, because they keep having to go back to the old, like, video home, like, where they had to film them on, like, videotape to kind of match the, the Sentai footage, which is kind of, uh, like, weird. You're going from different qualities, but they did the best they could in restoring the footage. Um, but the fight scenes are good. But there are times, I will admit... The special effects in terms of the CGI, not that good. Uh, especially with the Megazord. Um, I like the Dinozord stuff. That was a cool upgrade. But I did feel like the Megazord was lacking in quality. That whole Zord battle at the end, I was a little iffy about it. I was lucky. I was appreciated we got it, but I was a little iffy about it. I will say one thing, though. Uh, some of the props I thought were kind of interesting. The Morphers are actually the Legacy Morphers that Bandai put out. They're not the Hasbro line, um, which is shocking. You think, okay, why don't we use more Hasbro products? I think they did use some of the Hasbro what, power weapons in the final battle, because you get, do get to see them with the power daggers, the power sword, and the power lance. Those are made by Hasbro. Uh, nothing, I think, on the power bow or power axe yet, although I heard they are going to try to get that made. But... You know, it was cool to see those kind of props and that shit, but I thought it was cool they had the Legacy Morphers, because I'm like, oh, I got those. And they had to come up with an explanation about the contingency of the power coins and the morphing grid, and it's a nice build-up to things. Um, there's a lot to talk about in this special, and I'm going to get into spoilers right now. So, the main reason Rita's back is because Billy was trying to essentially find a way to bring back Zordon. Now, Zordon has been gone since uh, In Space when... Uh, Andros shattered his energy tube, it exploded, and took out all the bad from good with the Z-Wave, but apparently it didn't get rid of them entirely, it just kind of, you know, set their energy out into space. So there is evil there, and it's like, okay, that's why Lord Zed is back, that's why Reed is back. Okay, we're, we're, we're in the clear here on this idea. Okay, I kind of like what we're going here. Um, why you couldn't bring back Goldar, I mean, Goldar Maximus was in, um, one of the specials, um... But I think he should have been in there. You know, like, I know there's no Squat, Babu, uh, who's the, um, Finster. I like Finster. Um, you know, but at least we got Rita, which I'm, I'm cool with. And it does kind of leave off to where there's more to come. Uh, I will say this. You're teasing the hint that you're trying to bring Zordon back. Guys, it's inevitable. There's going to be a moment in Power Rangers down the line. Zordon will come back. I just guarantee he's coming back. You know, you cannot tease the return of Zordon and then potentially bringing them back and not achieve that. So, look out for that. It's gonna happen. If you can bring back Zed, if you can bring back Rita, fuck it. Break tradition. 
bring back Zordon. I think it's been long enough. You know, like, I get the idea. It's like, we don't need Zordon. Let's keep Zordon dead. I, if they went that route, I'd be okay with it. But I think, you know what? It's inevitable. You gotta bring Zordon back. Um, and plus, you need to fucking explain goddamn, uh, what's his name? Um, oh, what's the fucking, the, the fucking Tiki faces, face character from fucking Megaforce? Um, uh, I can't remember. Uh, Gose. He's gotta explain Gose, cause that whole, there's a simple explanation for that. Shut up, Gose. Shut up. <laughs> um, you just, Zordon should just come in and say, Go say, what the fuck are you doing? Explain to them what the hell is going on with the Morphin Grid. I don't know. I think that'd be kind of interesting. But um, in terms of nitpicks that I have with the special, I mean, obviously I talked about the special effects not being the best, but I will say this. Um, lacking a Bulk and Skull cameo, uh, Bulk and Skull being in it, um, even though there is a nice little uh, poster frame that pays tribute to them. No Ernie, unfortunately, because the actor passed away, but we did get to see Ernie's juice bar, which was really nice and recreated. Um, and on top of that, yeah, I'm a little disappointed, too, that there's no Kimberly. Um, I know Amy Jo Johnson was hinting early that she might have been involved, like, maybe in, like, a Skype call or something, but clearly they cut her out. And also, Amy Jo Johnson has made it clear why she's just probably never cut. Like, I know, fans, you want her back. She's not, to quote Elrond, she is not coming back. She's just done. Um, you know, she has said many times, like, she's not comfortable with it, like, getting back in the costume if she's asked, like, but, you know, she does respect the fans, which is totally okay. Um, but the fact that she did try to kind of tell fans what was going on is respected. Um, I will admit, it is a little tough to watch, given the passing of Jason David Frank, because the Green Ranger is in this special, um, and it's not Jason David Frank. They're, he does not make a cameo. He was unavailable when they shot this, and then he passed away. But I will say this that's actually a quite positive. Because, spoilers, um, the biggest reveal twist about this uh, special is that Rita kills Trini, the Yellow Ranger. Now, you're probably wondering, wait, that makes no sense, because Three Train died in a car accident in 2001. Really sad as well. Um, they did a very brilliant thing, much like they do with Jason David Franks, uh, with Tommy Oliver. Um, what they do is with Tommy and Trini, they utilize stunt actors, but in order to still get the, their characters to still be part of the story, they use old audio, uh, takes of Jason David Frank and Thuri Train, uh, to get the point across. Obviously, they got permission from the, uh, estates of both actors to utilize that, which I think is really cool. And at least they didn't deep fake it. I think that would have been more insulting. But this was a very ingenious way to get them into the story. So they have it where you hear three Trang in the tree in the ranger suit, like when Bill when Billy's about to be zapped by a, essentially an Avada Kedavra from uh, from uh, Rita. Um, she blocks out of the way, and Trini dies. Trini gets completely murdered, um, and it's really sad. So obviously, the person who takes up the mantle is Trini's daughter, and. This brings me to my other nitpick with the special. I'm sure this actress who plays Trini's daughter is totally okay. I'm sure she's a very nice girl. She's really cool. She did her best. But I'm sorry. You know what? Either it's the writing or I'm going to say the directing on this. She is directed in terms of acting extremely poorly. She is not good in this. Now, it's nothing against her. I am not blaming her for her performance at all. I'm sure she does perfectly fine. When she's doing kick-ass stuff, she's great. But the way she delivers the dialogue, the way she delivers the lines, the tone, um, it's the equivalent of George Lucas directing Hayden Christensen. It's I don't like sand levels of bad acting. And again, it's not her fault. It's the directing. This was directed kind of poorly, but I'm sure she's good. I think she's still a good actress. I think if you went and redubbed it where she delivered the lines a tad better, you could have been okay. But it feels like they were kind of having to tone down her emotional, because the whole thing is like, she's been training for a year to be the Yellow Ranger because, quite frankly, she's not. she wants to be a Power Ranger out of revenge. Uh, she wants vengeance. She wants to kill Rita to avenge her mother. Where, as being a Power Ranger, you, you're not supposed to be selfish. You're not supposed to take revenge. You know, that's what leads to you becoming, essentially, Tommy in Green with Evil. Um, it's not good, and it's why you can tell why 
the standout performances are Zack and, and Billy. They are withholding her from being a ranger because they know she's on a vengeful path. And over time, she does learn it's not about vengeance, it's about helping others. That's what makes you a Power Ranger. You have to be selfless. So I did like that the message is there, except the dialogue is just poorly delivered on it. And again, it's not her fault. But the execution is okay for what it is, essentially. Um, now, again, it's it's... Interesting to see all the collaborations on this one and seeing everything. Now, there is no Lord Zed cameo. There is no, uh, you know, bridging between what happened with Lord Zed and Rita. Unfortunately, there's no reunion between those two. But that would have been cool to see. But me, but again, they are hinting at maybe some stuff later because obviously uh, Billy gets in contact with the Equations and, you know, and, and Miranoi. And on top of that uh, is trying to bring Zordon back. You have Trini's daughter taking up the mantle of the Yellow Ranger. You still have Rangers on active duty. And it's going to be interesting to see where they go from here if they decide to have the old Power Rangers, you know, obviously help the new team and being essentially coaches and being sort of the sideline. They, like, they're not the sideline Rangers, but they're sort of like, hey, if the young Rangers are still kicking ass and they need help, we'll be there to back them up. I like that. I'm okay with that. If all the actors are okay with it, it's good with me. So, um, once and always, overall, I can say it's pretty good. Um, I will say, watching it on in the morning with a bowl of cereal, wearing a shitty Dragon Ball Z t-shirt. I know I'm not wearing a Power Rangers shirt. This is all I brought with me on my trip. Um, it felt like being a kid on Saturday mornings, watching Saturday morning cartoons. And I haven't felt that vibe in a long time, and it felt good to have that. It was also cool to get Ron Wasserman back to do the score. I'm like, thank you. Ron Wasserman's a friend of mine. He's a really cool dude. Um, it was great to see him back uh, doing the score for this. Wonderful job, by the way. So I'm going to give this special a good, nah, I could say a good 9.3 out of 10. It is one of the better specials of Power Rangers. Um, I definitely want to see more. I do want to see them maybe do this as sort of a side series, maybe like a little si a series of short side specials that kind of just continue the adventures of the Mighty Morphin team, maybe even expand on it uh, to show more of what happens uh, throughout the years with the Rangers. Um, and I want to see Zordon back. I do want to see Zordon come back and pretty much maybe work with the next set of teenagers with attitude and maybe explain some stuff, explain the stupid Goji bullshit. Um, or go say bullshit, bullshit, explain the go say bullshit. I want that to happen, but I had a good time. This was a decent ride and this was made for the fans. This is not made for like young kids. Like you kids can still watch it. The family can watch it, but this is clearly made for the fans who watched it like myself 30 years ago, uh, with the original Mighty Morphin team. So it's made for us and for that it delivers. So let me know your thoughts on Once and Always in the comments below. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you think it's one of the better specials, one of the worst specials since uh, Once a Ranger? Uh, let me know. And don't forget to support our Patreon. Just a dollar more will get you early access to all of our content as well as other special features. I'm going to keep doing some of these little um, opening nights while I'm gone. I've got two more movies i got to talk about. Uh, talk about uh, the Tetris movie, which I did watch, and I'm going to talk about the Super Mario Brothers movie, so two video game movies. Um, I've been watching a couple new new movies lately, so I'll let you know what I think about those later on, but until the next video, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys later. This is Big Jack Film signing off saying, may the power protect you. Take it easy.